Uh, this video is brought to you by Sailrite. If you'd like to build a cushion with no piping or boxing along the front of the cushion as seen here, this video will show you how to do it. We're going to show you how to sew a bull nose cushion in this video. This cushion has no piping along the front and no boxing, but it does have piping on the sides and the back. There are hundreds of fabrics to choose from the Sayerite website, so pick yours today and let's get started and show you how to make your own. We've cut a piece of Durascrim pattern material to size and have placed it in the seat bottom of the chair. We're then using a Sharpie marker to mark around the perimeter of the chair, right to the extreme outer edges of the chair and along the front to determine where the cushion will stop. We're going to cut out the Durascrim pattern material with scissors. We're going to cut right on top of that line we marked on the Durascrim pattern material. In a later step, we'll actually be cutting foam that is slightly larger than this pattern, but for now we want the pattern to fit just like you see here. When the cushion cover is complete, here's how it'll fit in that chair. Almost perfect. We've chosen to use the Fairfield Poly Fill New Foam, which is available from Sailrite. We've laid the pattern material on top of this 4 inch foam and notice we're marking about a half inch outside the pattern that we made. So about a half inch away from the pattern material. This will make the foam a little bit oversized all around the perimeter. When the cover is installed, the foam will be compressed slightly. To cut this compressed densified polyester batting, insert your scissors about an inch or so into the foam and start cutting. This type of compressed polyester batting will not cut with a foam cutter. You must use scissors or a utility knife. Here you can see Angela peeling away the layer that she cut through and then she's going to start uh, down underneath that layer she already cut and cut another inch or so off of the foam batting. We'll be using that same foam piece we just cut to make the pattern for our fabric. We've laid this foam on top of the fabric with the underside facing up. The wrong side is facing up. And then we're marking it with a Sharpie marker, a fine point Sharpie marker, but you can use a number two pencil. Mark the forward edge as well. Don't go all the way across, but just mark its location. As you can see, we're using a four inch foam. So we're going to add not four inches, but three inches here to the center. This will be the front of the cushion. That's why we had to place that mark on the fabric and uh, she's placing a mark on the other side here. Then she'll take that foam again and lay it directly over that mark. First she's going to strike a straight line up to that uh, point there. The reason we go three inches here or add three inches at the center is because the uh, cover will compress the foam by approximately an inch. So we don't want to add four inches there, only three inches. Then make a mirror image of the foam on the opposite side of the fabric. This will be the top plate and the bottom plate. Where she added the three inches, she's placing a mark in the center of that, so one and a half inches from the mark. That will be used later on. Now we're going to place a ruler on the underside of this and use the Sayerite Edge hot knife to cut out this 100% polyester fabric. As long as you're cutting a synthetic fabric, we recommend using a hot knife to prevent unraveling of the fabric. If it's a cotton fabric, you won't be able to use a hot knife. You could use pinking shears for that. After you're done cutting it out, fold it in half to determine if it's the same size as it is on the other side. It is. It's perfect. We're ready to move on. Now we're going to concentrate on cutting and sewing the piping. We'll be making our own piping utilizing the same fabric as we are for the entire cushion. So we're cutting, or measuring actually, strips of fabric that are one and a quarter inches wide. So here she's using that Sharpie marker. You could use a pencil if you prefer, which I typically do, and marking the fabric to one and a quarter inches in width. She'll make several strips of these since we need enough piping to wrap around the entire sides of the cushion and also include the back. So here are four strips. Now we'll use the Sayrite Edge Hot Knife and cut those strips out. We placed a marker on the underside to prevent damage to the tabletop. 
Most upholstery fabrics will unravel. This one's been cut with a hot knife and does not unravel. But let's show you what will happen if you cut it with scissors. It will unravel easily, which makes the labor of constructing the uh, cushion difficult because you have to contend with all the unraveling. So that's why we recommend using a hot knife. A hot knife seals the edge of the fabric and prevents it from unraveling. We're cutting off the salvage edge of these strips that we cut for the piping because those are unfinished. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and join these strips together. Notice how we lay the strips on top of each other to form an L. Then we'll sew across with a straight stitch diagonally from corner to corner. As we sew, we'll do some reversing at the beginning to lock our stitch in place and some reversing at the end. This is a rather small stitch, so we have to just sew across to the next corner and reverse here as well. This will give us a nice finished transition as we transition from one strip to the next. Here's what it looks like when you fold it to the outside surface. Looks nice. We'll join all of those strips together following that same procedure. We'll not show all of this. Now you can insert your piping and take it to the sewing machine with the cording foot installed and sew along it. Or you can do as Angela is doing here. She's using double-sided tape. This is the double-sided tape for canvas and basting it on the side of the strips that are used to cover the piping. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then she places her foam cording inside the middle of that strip and folds it over to the double-sided tape and that holds it in place. The advantage of doing it this way is that you won't see a preliminary stitch because some people actually take it to the sewing machine and sew a preliminary stitch and then take it and sew it onto the cushion. This will prevent a, a possible stitch from ever showing up when you're done with the cushion. Not a bad idea, but it's a little bit labor intensive. Here we are coming to a junction. We would just want to show what that looks like. Looks nice as it transitions from one piece to the next. She'd move her finger. There it is. <laughs> To sew that piping onto the actual cushion cover, we're going to take the cover material, fold it in half, and then fold it down its length and find the center location in the back of the cushion. And she's marking it here on the inside of the fabric, not the outside, with the Sharpie marker. This is where we want to join the piping together, at the rear of the cushion. She's marked it on both this side and also the top side. So now she's just uh, placing another mark there so she can easily find it and she's placing an arrow there. So here's where the piping will be joined together so she'll start her piping approximately two inches away from that mark so there's excess piping at the back so it can be joined in a later step. On the Sayerite 111 sewing machine the cording foot has been installed. She'll place the piping in the tunnel of the cording foot. Now, this fabric is no longer folded, it is laying flat, which uh, you can't see very well in the video, but uh, we do not have multiple layers, it's only a single layer. She'll then carefully sew it in place, matching up the tail edge of the piping with the edge of the fabric. Sometimes customers will pin the uh, piping to the fabric, but it's not necessary if you do it very slowly, as Angela is doing here. Now this is the preliminary stitch and we don't really want those stitches to show up when we join the boxing to this piping. So you can actually help to feed the piping through the cording tunnel so that the stitch is as far away from the piping as possible. So Angela is, if you notice, feeding the piping slightly to the left as she faces the sewing machine. This will keep that stitch a little bit further away from the piping. This preliminary stitch will not show up when the entire cushion is complete. Stop sewing about five inches from where you started sewing. And here you can see that arrow where the piping will be joined together. She's going to trim the side of the piping where we began so that it's about an inch past that arrow. And then she's going to peel apart the uh, fabric that overlays the piping cord. If you've stitched it, you'll have to rip some stitches up. Since we use double sided tape, we can just peel it apart. That exposes the piping cord. We're going to create a single hem here at the edge. So fold the fabric in approximately a half inch. And there we go. Now we'll take the other side where it will cross over that piping and determine where to cut it. We want it longer by about an inch. 
So we're going to cut it here. Next, we'll feel where the piping crosses over each other and we'll cut that side that we created the hem off so that it is flush with the opposite end of the piping that will come up and butt up against it. She's going to cut it at a slight angle here. Now, when you piece those pieces together, they will be butted up to each other exactly. We're going to peel apart the uh, fabric on the opposite end. This is the end that does not have the hem. And this is the M end that does have the hem. Peel that up as well. She's going to use masking tape to uh, uh, join these two piping cords together. This is probably not necessary. Uh, it's all up to preference. This is the way she likes to do cushions. So she'll join those piping pieces together so they're buttered up flush. Then she'll lay that fabric piece that is not hemmed in place and then the piece over top of it that is hemmed. And this gives it a nice finished look. Now she'll put it back in the sewing machine and continue that preliminary stitch all the way through that junction to the other side. When you get to the junction, be sure that it's laying nice and flat. Take your time. The more time you spend at this, the more beautiful the results. And as with most sew sewing, you want to do some reversing at the beginning and the end to lock your stitch in place. Since this is a bull nose cushion, it does not have boxing along the front. It's already built into the plates. However, along the sides it does. Here's where the zipper intersects. So we need to measure approximately how long the boxing will be for the sides, where we want the zipper to be uh, started at the back of the cushion. So we want our boxing to be approximately 18 inches or longer. Our foam is 4 inches in thickness, so we want to cut a boxing that is 4 inches in height. So we're measuring this fabric and we've cut a strip that is 4 inches high. We did not add any for seam allowance because we want the cushion to be compressed when it's done. This single strip will be long enough because folded in half it is longer than 18 inches so this will suffice beautifully. She's placed marks at the center to determine where the center of it is and then uses the hot knife to cut it in half. So this will equal our two pieces of boxing that's required for the sides of the cushion. Here where she cut that boxing or facing strip in half, she's going to create uh, rounded corners. She's using the Sharpie marker to do that and then she uses the hot knife to trim the rounded corners. This is where this, this boxing will be joined to the front portion of the cushion, the portion that already has the uh, boxing or facing built Got into the plates. With a pencil on the back side, mark the center of those boxing strips on the ends with those uh, rounded corners. And that is the location where we will start sewing. Back at the beginning of this video, we marked on the fabric the center location. This is where the boxing will be uh, joined to the plates at that center location that we marked way earlier in the video. It must be centered. So she's lining up the marks. Notice that the Outside surfaces are facing each other and she flips the panel around so the boxing is on top or sometimes referred to as facing. Make sure the marks are directly on top of each other and she'll start sewing there. Now this stitch will not be visible so this stitch should be as close to the piping as possible. The cording foot is installed on the Serite 111 sewing machine. Now she's coming to the corner of the boxing and notice that she pulls the boxing so that it's flush with the edge of the piping and the plate that's underneath it. So she created a nice junction or nice corner and then she continues to match up the boxing with the edge of the uh, piping and the plate underneath. Take your time and sew close to the piping. You want this stitch as close to the piping as possible. This will hide the preliminary stitch that we talked about earlier. And it'll make the piping nice and snug. 
Angela has not yet marked where the zipper will start, so she's determining where she wants the zipper to start approximately. There's no hard fast rules on this. You just want the zipper opening to be large enough to insert the foam, so it can actually be smaller than what Angela has marked. And she will stop sewing about an inch away from that mark and do some reversing there to lock the stitch in place. So the boxing or facing is not very long as you can see here in the video because that's where the zipper will start at the back edge of this cushion. Now we're going to sew the other side of the same boxing strip. So she flips the cushion around so the boxing's on the underside now. We start at the center again and sew around that side as well. Notice that the boxing on the bottom side is still being pulled around so the edges are flush as she sews the corner. As is the normal practice with sewing, anytime you make major adjustments to the fabric, make sure you bury your needle in the fabric so you don't lose your last position. I don't know if you can see it well in the video, but notice the preliminary stitch that uh, joined the piping to the plates. It is outside the stitch that we're creating now. That's because this stitch is very close to the piping. Our preliminary stitch will never be seen. We're not going to cut any video out here. We want to show sewing all the way to the uh, position that we started the uh, boxing on the opposite side. So try to stop right where you stopped when you created the uh, first stitch on the other side of this boxing strip. We'll need to follow that same procedure for the opposite boxing strip on the other side. First we're going to determine the stop location and mark it on the other side. Once that's done, we can start sewing the other boxing strip or a facing strip to the opposite side following that same procedure again. Always make sure the outside surfaces are facing each other. We are not going to show this process because we basically just showed you exactly how to do it in the previous step. It's the same procedure done again. So we're going to skip ahead. Now both boxing sides are installed. Now we can trim them to size. So we want to trim them approximately an inch away from that mark we marked on the plate. So we're going to use the Serite Edge hot knife and trim it so that it's straight. We'll do that on this side and we'll do that on the opposite side as well. Notice that there's two or three inches of boxing that has not yet been sewn down. That's important because we're going to create a hem on the end of the boxing. Angela's being sure that uh, the zipper will start in the same location and she'll trim this side as well. We'll use that serrated edge hot knife yet again to seal the edge of the fabric. Now on both of these boxing ends we're going to create approximately a half inch hem, a single hem, and sew it in place, reversing at the beginning and the end to lock our stitch in place. We'll also do that on the second piece as well. We'll not show all of this. Alright, we're done with the boxing. It's now time to make the zipper black. There are multiple ways to make a zipper plaque, but we're going to show you one of my favorites. Here we're determining how long the zipper should be, and be sure that it's at least four inches longer than the uh, back side of the cushion that you created. Angela's going to cut it to size here with scissors. We're using a coil YKK zipper, and we're going to measure the width of the zipper. 
the width of this zipper is one and a quarter inches approximately. So our foam was four inches and we made boxing that was four inches. We need to add the width of the zipper. In this situation, it was one and a quarter inches to the width of the foam. So four inches plus one and a quarter is five and a quarter inches. We're gonna cut a strip of fabric that is five and a quarter inches for our application. We'll then use the Cerite Edge Hot Knife and cut the strip to size. If you want to use a hot knife like this and don't have, uh, don't have a professional one like the Cerite Edge, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun or pinking shears. Doesn't work as well as a hot knife, but it will work. Now we're going to cut this strip to the length of our zipper plus an extra few inches, as is always wise. Then we're going to fold this strip down its length so the outside surfaces are on the inside. Then we're going to place that zipper along the folded edge and mark where the flange end ends with a pencil. That's where we want this preliminary stitch to be made. We are not going to reverse here because we're going to be ripping this stitch out in a future step. We've also installed the Deluxe Magnetic Guide. This guide's great because it works like a fence on a table saw. It helps to keep your work uh, feeding in the sewing machine at the same distance. Make sure the fold is in the center and then start sewing. It's a good idea to sew with the longest stitch length because we are going to be ripping the stitch out. And remember, no reversing. Now we'll simply sew down the length of that strip of fabric that will be created for our zipper. Angela instinctively puts her hand on the reverse lever because she uh, is so used to reversing, but notice she remembers, oh yeah, no reversing. Now we'll take our scissors and carefully cut down the folded portion of this uh, fabric, keeping this uh, cut right in the center. So take your time doing this. No reason to use a hot knife. The edges will not ravel much when you're sewing the zipper down. Now splay this assembly open. If you're using a coil zipper, be sure the teeth are going to be facing down. If you're using a Vislon zipper, it is not important. It doesn't matter. This is a coil zipper, so our teeth are facing down. And we want to center this zipper on top of that splayed open portion that we just cut. We'll position our walking foot on the Serite 111 so that it is walking right next to the teeth of the zipper. The teeth are facing down. And we'll sew along its edge. Reverse at the beginning to lock your stitch in place and sew all the way down its length, being sure the zipper is centered in the middle of that splayed open section. If you've cut it exactly right, that means the edges of the zipper will be flush with the edges of the portion that you just cut. Take your time making sure the zipper stays centered between the splay and the stitches in the same location. Then reverse it around and start from the opposite end so you can sew the other side and reverse the beginning and we'll also reverse at the end. This keeps the stitch exactly in the same location because you're starting from the opposite end all the way to the opposite end. Reverse there as well. Now all we need to do is rip those preliminary stitches using the Cerite Deluxe Seam Ripper. And you have a beautiful zipper plaque. As mentioned earlier, there are multiple ways to install or make a zipper plaque. This is what I find to be the easiest and also the most beautiful. Hides the zipper nicely. Now we need to install the slider. We'll pull the zipper teeth apart, feed on the fat portion of the slider so the edges of the zipper are flush on opposite sides, push the slider into position, then pull on the slider uh, tab to pull the slider into position on the teeth. The most common mistake in making a cushion is forgetting to install the slider. <laughs> so don't forget that. Position the slider in the center of the zipper plaque and you're ready for the next step. We're almost done with the cushion. Now we need to sew the zipper plaque to the actual cover. We're gonna fold the zipper plaque in half to determine where the center is and mark its location with a pencil. This is the outside surface that Angela is marking. 
Now we'll center the zipper plaque on the back side of the cushion. Remember we marked it earlier. Angela will walk the zipper along the side to determine where it should begin. And she's going to start sewing at that location. The cording foot is still installed on the sewing machine. So we're going to start sewing there, reversing to lock our stitch in place. And sew all the way around, securing the zipper plaque to the plate. The zipper plaque is on the bottom side and be sure the outside surfaces are facing each other. Don't install it wrong side up. Outside surfaces must face each other. Okay, you, you should pretty much know how to do this. We'll want to sew all the way to the end of the zipper plaque. We're going to skip ahead. Oh, remember not to sew the uh, second portion of the cushion. Notice that it is laying to the left. You don't want to sew that in, so make sure that's out of the way. Here we are. We skip forward to the end. You can see the zipper plaque end at the bottom side, and she'll do some reversing here. Now we'll turn this whole assembly so that we're working with the zipper plaque on the top side and we'll sew the opposite side of the zipper plaque. So now we can see the zipper plaque on the top and it's facing the plate down below. We'll sew all the way around the perimeter just as we did with the opposite side. We'll skip ahead to the end here. Make sure the uh, folded portion of the boxing is down flat so that it does not get caught someplace. Sew through that. There's the double hem that we just sewed through all the way to the end of the zipper plaque. Do some reversing there. Now we can open up the zipper completely and turn the assembly right side out. We still need to sew the ends of the zipper plaque and that's what we're going to do next from the outside of the cushion. You can also inspect your work here to be sure that your piping looks good and you can restitch it if you need to. Ours looks pretty good, so now we're going to concentrate on closing up the zipper plaque so the slider does not come off. So we're going to feed it back into the sewing machine and sew across. We're going to leave enough of the fabric uh, so that the zipper slider can actually be pushed back underneath the fabric slightly. So we're going to sew approximately an inch from the uh, double, or the single hem, I'm sorry. So we'll start it here and sew down, reversing to lock the, this in place and to also close off the end of the zipper. Notice that we are not sewing all the way up to the piping. It's really not necessary to sew all the way up to the piping. We're going to stop just short of the piping, reverse back over the teeth. Be careful that your needle doesn't deflect as you do that. And that finishes it off. We'll do that on the other side as well. We're not going to show that. Now all we need to do is insert the foam. This foam is a compressed polyester batting that we've chosen to use and it easily slides into the cover. We left a pretty big zipper opening in the back side of the cover so it's pretty easy to push this foam in and to get it positioned appropriately. Angela's going to use her fingers to push it up into the corners and make sure the cover fits nicely. We're going to show this in double time. Once you're happy and you feel the foam is pushed into the cover as far as it'll go, you can zip the zipper shut. And then, as always, uh, work the piping so that it is right on the corner of the cushion. Boy, she's beautiful. Looks nice. See how the slider's kind of hidden? There's the back side of the zipper with our zipper plaque, and you can also see where the piping joins together. Looks good. Fit it into the chair and it's a perfect fit, a little bit oversized, exactly how we want it. Here's the materials list that was used to build this cushion. We've chosen to use a P. Kaufman Outdoor fabric. There are hundreds of fabrics that can be chosen at the Sailrite website for outdoor applications. And as always, we at Sailrite stand ready to answer any questions you may have about this project or any other canvas or upholstery project. This is one of the many projects that we did in the complete fabric porch makeover. If you'd like to watch before and after shots, be sure to click on this video. 
For more free videos like this, check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.